Hi there, it's Gabriel here, SEO manager at Hike SEO, and in this video we'll be talking about disavowing links, the best practices for disavowing harmful backlinks on your website. So let's dive in. So what you'll learn in this video is what is link disavowing and how do you actually do that, and why should you disavow links, and what is a bad backlink, and the kind of um, gray zone and how to make that a bit more defined when to actually disavow a link and um, what happens when you do disavow one and then creating a disavow file and how to do that and then finally how to disavow these links in google search console so let's dive in what are disavowed links disavowed links are links from external websites that a website owner asks search engines to disregard or ignore to rank their website in search engine results pages or SERPs. So why disavow these links in the first place? Why do we want them, these search engines to ignore them? Basically, low quality or spammy links from other websites can actually negatively affect search engine rankings. And this is from the Penguin update. Um, when Google basically went through all the web and basically started calling all of these sites that were low quality and spammy. And these webs and websites that have built up links from these spammy sites were severely affected. Um, and it's more important than ever today to secure credible, authoritative, high quality backlinks. And there's no shortcuts anymore for getting backlinks that can rank your website. It has to be, uh, it has to look organic, it has to look high quality, it has to be real. Um, therefore, to mitigate the effects, you can use the disavow tool to indicate to Google and other search engines which links should be ignored by their algorithms. Because sometimes other websites link to you and you don't want them to link to you because they're low quality or because they're spammy. Um, so what makes a bad backlink? Well, there's different ways um, and it can be subjective and quite a gray area of opinion, to be fair. Um, there's no clear cut. This is a bad backlink. This is a good backlink. Um, it's a gray zone and it's a matter of opinion. So it's best to go by what Google determines to be a low quality link. So here's what Google says. Basically, <laughs> It's a low quality link is intended to manipulate page rank or sites ranking in Google or may be considered part of the link scheme and a violation of Google's webmaster guidelines. So this includes any behavior that manipulates links to your site or outgoing links from your site. So that's quite a mouthful and quite abstract. So what this means, in other words, it's basically any link that artificially tries to create a backlink where it naturally wouldn't appear organically or naturally. So here are some different types of back, backlinks. So firstly, paid links. Google hates paid links. It's just not a good thing, and we don't want to acquire them at all. Um, they're not always identifiable um, for those who do do paid links, and that's the problem. So generally, uh, their site-wide do follow links and these can be kind of seen in that way um, or at exact match anchor text things like that or sites that are that have unrelated content to the site that it's linking to so all these are little clues that it could be a paid link um, next is private blogging networks or pbns and some people are still using these today even though google has said many times don't get links from PBNs, they're harmful, and Google has already flagged up PBNs in the past and continues to. And these are basically networks of websites linked together in such a way to manipulate the rankings of sites. And they consist of high domain authority domains that recently expired or were auctioned, and basically they link them together. They use these as a jumping board to link to sites that they want to start ranking. Um, and they don't necessarily add any value. They're just there purely to be a link booster, a domain authority booster. And so another one is low quality directories. And you have to ask if it's a low quality directory, will it generate referral traffic? Is there any traffic on the site? Is it actually used by people 
um, to actually find what it is it's listing. And is it reputable? Is it used by the intended audience? Um, if the answers are no, then most likely it's a low quality directory and um, we don't want to be listed. You don't want to have a backlink from it. Four, uh, comment and forum spam is another one. And Google encourages commenting on authoritative sites and forums. So it's not like Google says don't link from comments, don't link from forums. It's more of when it becomes a spammy practice where it becomes automated um, and done purely just for the links. So if you comment and add value in links and and participate in forums in your industry and add value, and yes, you might have a link to your site because you just want to source your, you just want to um, create some credibility and you want to say where it's come from, coming from, or you might recommend an article on your site that adds value, that's completely fine. The thing is most commenting systems today, um, it wasn't so much so the case 10, 15 years ago, but today, they automatically set these links to no follow, so you won't really get much value from them in terms of link equity or link juice. Um, so it's fine, um, but still, any sort of attempt to manipulate this or attempt to kind of spam these forums or these comments isn't a good thing anyways. It just will be counterproductive. Five, negative SEO. So where competitors intentionally link to your website from hundreds or even thousands of low quality website, this happens more often than not because you have, it's almost like a war online and you have competitors who really don't want you to do well in the rankings and they literally go against it and they link to your site from all these spammy sites just so your rankings can get hurt. And it's just really sad that people actually do this, but um, it happens. And to protect yourself is why we're talking about disavowing links, um, because you have no control um, as to who links to your site. People do it all over the world and you don't know who's doing it. And they can link from really like crappy, like low quality sites that can hurt your rankings. So you, what you wanna do is you wanna check for spikes in the number of referring domains in your softwares and see if there's any sort of weird spikes, uh, like a lot of domains that have been referred to you all at once. And these are indications of potential uh, negative SEO um, actions. So when do you disavow links to begin with? So disavowing links should be done with much caution and Google says this. If used incorrectly, this feature can potentially harm your site's performance in Google search results. So don't use disavowing um, that lightly. It's used as a last resort. So only use a disavow tool if, number one, you have a manual action against your site from Google for unnatural links to your site, or two, you think you're about to get such a manual action because of paid links or other link schemes that violate Google's quality guidelines. So that's really important to note because you want to do some things against this first before you actually go to the disavowal route. So before disavowing, try the following two things. Firstly, try to remove the link yourself if you have access to the website. If you don't, then approach the website owner, like email them, message them, whatever, and request the removal of the, the link or the links on their site. Now, if that doesn't work, then we need to go the dis disavowal route. So when you disavow a web page or an entire domain, you're essentially requesting Google to disregard certain links to your domain and just saying, look, ignore these. These are spammy. These are harmful. I don't want to be associated uh, to this link or these links or this domain. If the request is granted and it's up to Google to determine that, those links will not be taken into account when determining your search engine rankings. So here's the thing. Google's not required to accept your request for link disavowal. Just because you submit a disavowal file, it doesn't mean that the links or the websites or the domains on there will actually be disavowed. It's up to Google in the end to determine that. So it's just a suggestion and it's not a directive. So how do you actually create a disavowal file? Great question. Um, a disavowal file, it's just a simple text file 
that can be in the .txt or .csv format. And basically each line of that file must contain one of the following. So either a link that has been disavowed, so uh, a domain that has been disavowed. Um, for example, you would list it like this, domain, then colon, and then spammy.com or whatever domain that it is. That was just an example. Or a subdomain that has been disavowed. So for example, sub, um, you would replace obviously sub.spammy.com with the domain or the subdomain that you want to disavow. Um, and you can also add a comment just for your records if you want. So you can, uh, it has to start with a hash symbol, the number symbol. Uh, so hash, and then you can put like updated June 30th, 2023 or so, something like that. Um, how to, so then here's a quick image of a little text file that I created and just shows you some examples of both a domain that we want to disavow, a link, a specific link, and a subdomain that we want to disavow. So you can have as many in there as you want, um, and then you can save that. So here's a few restrictions though, saying that you can have as many as you want. You can't actually have like infinite numbers in there. Firstly, the file must be in UTF-8 or 7-bit ASCII encoding. So the standard text editor should automatically default to that, but just check your settings. And um, the maximum file size is two megabytes or 100,000 lines. So 100,000 links or 100,000 domains, whichever comes first. So chances are, let's hope you won't reach that number, but on huge websites that might have a lot of toxic links, a lot of link spam, it might reach that. So you might have to submit multiple disavowal files, or you might want to compress certain links into domain instead, just to save some lines. So how do you disavow these links in Google search consoles? Um, so basically you have the file now, now you want to go to the disavow links tool in Google search console. And basically here's the link to go there. And, and it's slash disavow links once you're in search console. And then what you want to do is you want to select your website from the drop down. So you click on that. And then you want to click on uh, upload disavow list. And that's when you would basically choose the .txt or that .csv file that contains the links that you want to disavow. Click on submit to upload that file and review the information on the confirmation screen and then click on done. And that's it. Um, that's pretty much the, the steps. So in Hike, you can help with this disavow links process because Hike actually has a backlink health check tool. And this is really useful for spotting potential spammy, potential low quality sites that you can review and then add to a short list. And in that um, short list, you can download, you can export that disavow file and then you can upload that to Google Search Console. Or you can download one from Google Search Console that's current, upload it into Hike, and then add to it, and then update it, download it, and re-upload it to Google Search Console. So you can see um, the different domain authorities in the little, the little red ones in the squares, those are the domain authorities. So obviously really low ones, you'll go hand in hand in many cases with spammy links. So you want to review them on a case by case basis. So that's it for disavowing links. If you have any questions about that and how um, any other questions, let me know. Otherwise, if you haven't tried Hike SEO yet, definitely sign up um, because it can offer some really great tools as you've seen, in addition to the backlink health, health check tool that can help with your overall SEO. And it's built for beginners, it's built for agencies that serve small uh, medium businesses that have no idea how to use SEO, but want to be empowered by it um, to move forward and get some great rankings, some great organic traffic. So if you have any questions, let me know and I will see you in the next video.